What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five and the man, Eric Sheetaber. We're going to be talking through Wednesday's Monster Slate. Um, we got another, you know, really huge one in the NBA. It'd be nice to balance that a little bit, get a little bit on Tuesdays and Thursdays more than just having like 5 million games every Wednesday and Monday. But hey, we got a big one. We've got big tournaments. It's a big day. We're going to try and make sense of it. Uh, it hasn't been the best uh, start to the week for me. I, have, I didn't, I didn't, didn't quite uh, get my birthday narrative to show up the same way Julius Randle did yesterday. Um, he was awesome, but uh, I, I, uh, I just couldn't quite make it get there in the the one big buy-in I played. Had a night nice, like a run at one and and the fade away, but didn't quite get there. So ready to move on to it. Sheets, how'd you do? And then what are your thoughts on the slate? I didn't do so well in DFS, but this is like crazy stuff going on in the World Cup. So, so France benched all their players because. They really didn't need to win. So Tunisia had a chance to win, you know, against against their bench, against French, uh, France's bench, even though they were a small underdog. Tunisia was up one nothing like the whole game. And and when it became one nothing, France put all their starters back in, you know, just to try to win the group. And in the last like 30 seconds of extended time, France scored a goal and they looked at the entire Tunisian population like looked like they wanted to kill themselves. And after like a ten minute delay, they 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 said the goal is no good. So Tunisia, <laughs> I think is gonna, I think Tunisia is gonna advance if they can hold off for another couple of seconds. Oh my god, Freaking it's craziness! Crazy. Yeah, That's crazy. Well, yeah. yeah, congrats to our U.S. guys. That was a that was pretty fun yeah. yesterday. Nice to see them get through. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's been fun having the World Cup on. I've just had it on in the background mostly while I've been doing my DFS stuff. But uh, Cheats, what are your overall thoughts? Like, it's a, it's a huge slate. I know we try to make them small. I think this one actually is going to have more concentrated chalk than most. And I, that's what that's sort of been the case lately, um, just with the situation in Minnesota. But we also probably are going to have a bunch of information that we're not going to know until a little later. So we're going to have to do our best to analyze it now. Yeah, I currently have four guys in total, <clears throat> which are projecting for 6X and above. We'll get to them later. Um which on a 13 game slate means it's probably going to end up being more like 10. <laughs> it's like, uh, um, by the end of it. Um, but, uh, it's, it's, it's a monster slate. And I know that we, we say this a lot. I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be as concerned about ownership, like in general, uh, on a just slate this big, um, the Minnesota guys, well, we'll get to the guys that are projected for higher ownership, but, but, um, uh, it's, 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 a really good slate to do that uh, Millie maker in. I mean, you're really going to have to earn it. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Um, per- person who wins that one, like deserves, uh, deserves d- double if you want to know the truth. <laughs> um, so oh, good that Denmark got eliminated. They were the big, the big hype train coming into this. Everybody thought they were like the big value. Yeah, and, they got eliminated. Um, and then um, uh, what else? I guess, I guess that's it. I guess we could just kind of get started. FanDuel's yeah, a big was- one. Oh, I, I threw it threw out some some love to you in the State Kings Discord. I, don't oh, know I saw, saw that. It. I appreciate that. Yeah. 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 So listen, it's a Millie maker for everybody, but I have bad news for everybody that's paying attention. You guys are all playing for third because Let's I'm getting go. second. So I'm getting second. <laughs> take- and, and Bobby's getting first. So if third's good enough for you, I encourage you to play it. Um, <laughs> otherwise, you know, just go ahead and play other stuff. But I'm 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 definitely in and uh I'll be playing MME stuff too. It'll be a big, big DFS night. Nice. Nice, man. Well, all right. I'm, I'm excited about our first and second place finishes already. I don't even know yes. if we need to go through the show. Yes. Um, all right. Let's pull up the screen and then, uh, then do the game by game here, because uh, there is a lot of possible question marks. I just think we're going to have to just address those things later. Uh, it's too hard to do the if ands because there end up being so many different things than we even thought of in certain situations. But in Philly, I, uh, I think we actually know who's playing and I I'm sorry in the the Philly Cleveland game and I'm not like like sure Embiid is one of the million spend ups that you can should consider I think he's a you know it's totally fine um, Mobley's still like a younger player like he's you know he's a good defender but I, I don't expect it to be too difficult for Embiid I I do think that Mobley is mildly interesting here I don't know I'm I'm not getting to this as much I think Donovan Mitchell you can make an argument here. A lot of guys who I have sort of like as meh on my list, but I think are, I think are fine. I just, I personally would play Mobley or uh, Mitchell on the uh, Cleveland side and I would play Embiid on the Philly side, but I, I don't think any of them are high priorities for me at the moment. Yeah. I can't imagine playing anybody from this game. It's, it's, it's game one of a 13 game slate with a 209, you know, 209 total. The only, the only guy I'm really getting to at all is Embiid and, uh, 
like you said, he's one of five, six, a seven. I mean, like 10 guys you could spend up for, you know? So yeah. I wouldn't consider him a priority except to say that, but you could say this for all these guys. They all look to be sub 10% owned, like all these spend ups, right? Right, um, right? So with that said, I mean, yeah, you get the right one, you get the right one. Um, but I mean, just because it's an early game, because it's a huge slate, probably going to end up maybe getting to some of him in MME, but I can't imagine him being in my big buy-in. And, and as a result, I don't think I'm going to have anybody. From this game. Yeah. And that's where I'm at. And it's, and it's, you know, it's certainly, it's one of those where I'm not probably going to have these guys, but if you wanted to play that, you have a nice little, you know, spend up stack with, with MB down the one side. And I do think Mitchell's price is very reasonable for what it's worth. Um, and we, and I, and, and Mo, Mobley actually might, might be the safe. Well, I don't know. Safe is a hard word to use with him, but 7,100 is a little, a little bit cheap with no Jared Allen and no, no, uh, uh, Kevin Love. All right. Uh, let's move on to the next one, which is, uh, Atlanta, Orlando sheets. Why don't you start this one off? Yeah. To me, quite another, uh, boring spot. If you want to know the truth, as far as I'm looking at it, it's, uh, I'll repeat the same thing I said before. I don't really see for the other game. I don't see much value per se in this game. So then I kind of look to the spend ups to see if any of them stand out. And I'm seeing Trey young, just, you know, he's a play. I mean, he's, he's you know, top 10, you know, top 10 play on the slate. You know what I mean? But what does that mean? Uh, so uh, I, I might get to some of him. He's probably being owned it fairly given his chances of, of smashing. Um, I, I would rather play, a spend up uh, as a run back to some values. So maybe we'll find better opportunities to kind of prioritize spend ups in that way. But Trey is really the only thing that I've even any interest in at all on this, on either side. here. Yeah. Um, I like, I think John Collins is probably worth noting that he's put up 40 and 47 in his last two games. One of those was without Capella, but I, I think this is a good matchup, and I think that he he deserves to be in the conversation as a mid tier guy who probably just gets completely overlooked by the end of the day. And I think Trey Young is 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 completely fine here. I think Dejounte Murray's price is reasonable. I think any of those guys, you know, I'm not going to talk you out of, but I'm also not going to prioritize them. And I don't know how to get to anybody on Orlando as well. Uh, again, trying to make a big slate small. Uh, I certainly wouldn't wouldn't like fault you until you're doing something terribly wrong if you wanted to play Paolo. Or or bull bull or bull bull, but um, and and shout out to bull bull by the way. The guy's actually like, you know, he's he's playing basketball like at a high level. Like I mean, yeah. I feel like I feel like that's it, you know, it, it's nice when these guys get a chance who are supposed to be busts and everything and overhyped or whatever they call them. But I, I just I just think that it's nice. But I, I don't I don't really have any love for them from a DFS perspective tonight. So we sort of have two games out of the way and no real massive love. Um for anybody, but I think John Collins is my favorite play in this game. Um, uh, he, you know, he or one of the guards from Atlanta, but I, nothing is a priority for me. All right. Next. What do you got? Is it, uh, we got, uh, Miami, Boston sheets. Uh, what do you got here? Because I feel like we might be looking at another one. <laughs> yeah. And this is good. You know, this is good for me. I mean, the more, yeah. the more games I can not worry about, especially on the early, on the early side, um, the better. And uh, I will repeat the exact same thing I said in these uh, first two games, I guess. Um, I don't see any real value on either side. So I go look at the spend ups and I see, you know, uh, Tatum as as a play. You know, he's he's always has some kind of ceiling. But, you know, against Miami, Miami still plays good defense. It's total is kind of whatever. Um, so if I get to him, I'll get to him. But I can't imagine prioritizing him either. So for me. I'm I'm kind of moving along here at, at, at three straight I don't say cross offs but three yep. straight games that that don't don't give me too much. Yeah, I'm with you. I I don't have a whole lot from here. I mean, I guess if there's any any injuries or something like that, I could I could find my way to having some interest on the in the Miami side. But as of right now, I don't have a ton of interest here. Um, doesn't seem like the right spot to play Tatum at ten eight. But I I mean, look, it's it, these guys are all just meh to me. So. We can move on for right now. I mean, again, this might change later because there is a lot of questionables on Miami. But as of right now, I have nothing. All right, Washington, Brooklyn. Um, sheets. <laughs> well, I actually had um, New York, Milwaukee oh, next. Sorry, that's, that's okay fault. because uh, at least Brooklyn, I have some, I have a couple of guys that are showing up a little bit. So let's talk about that one. Yeah. Um, 
So Brooklyn, I have one, two, three, you know, okay values, actually. I have Nick, Nick Claxton um, at center, 5,800. He's secondary to, to the top values, but he's certainly in, in the in the mix. Um, then I have Joe Harris at 3,800. Um, he shows up as, as okay. And then kind of similarly, I have Seth Curry um, at 4,200. I mean, none of them, none of those guys look amazing, but they'll probably look, they'll definitely be lower owned than, you know, than, 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 the, than the, you know, than some of the better values. Let's put it that way. Um, so those guys look good. And on the spend upside, um, I think that if I have to cut it off somewhere, boy, oh boy, maybe this is, maybe this is the day. Maybe this is the Kyrie Irving day. Um <laughs> Maybe for a million dollars, he could he could put it up against Milwaukee. Get some get some get some Giannis. Uh, oh, excuse me, wrong wrong uh, wrong game. Sorry. Maybe maybe uh, maybe for a million dollars, he can get something going on. I don't know. So him and Durant, I have very similar um, as far as their ability to be played. Now they're different prices or whatever, but I still kind of think of them the same. You know, like one one of the two. Um, and uh, Durant, I just I just have below these other guys. Um, Below and be below other guys will will think about. So I don't know if I'll get to him, but I guess, I guess uh, what's his name? Uh, the hell's his name? Kyrie looks looks okay. Um, and on the Washington side, um, nothing. Uh, yeah, so I'm not really getting to much over there. So what do you think of the Brooklyn values? What do you think of the spend us? What what do you, you like anything here? Not really. Um... Okay. The, the 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 you could talk me in like the thing is this the Seth Curry Joe Harris if I don't think they're going to end up with any ownership I don't care what the early projections look like I just think by the end of the day this play this kind of fades away a little bit yeah but I think Curry would be my preferred of the two I guess if you if you I mean I think they're okay I do like Claxton a little bit but I think John Collins is every bit as good a play as Claxton is so uh and, and you don't lose the center spot. So I have those two of all the guys we've talked about. Those are probably my two favorite plays in that, that mid tier. And, and I'm just not getting to, to anybody as a, as a, a great spot for, for Washington. Um, Pretty amazing. What Porzingis did the other night. It's I, I'm kind of pissed off at myself because I actually like, I played players from Minnesota and I, I really thought like, you know, Porzingis against Gobert, this is like a nightmare. And they tried to do it with Gobert and all Porzingis did was hit the first four threes he took because Gobert wouldn't come out of the paint. So I'm kind of a little irritated at myself that I didn't play Porzingis when he put up 60 the other night. This is uh this is one I'm not probably going to get to him again. So I, I guess just another cross off for me outside of maybe Claxton. Um, and I think Kyrie for uh, Kyrie is your your tournament play. I think that there there is definitely merit in taking a shot on him at eighty five hundred. Um, when other people aren't willing to do so. So he's probably my favorite, my preferred. KD was just unbelievably lights out the other night, but it took him to be unbelievably lights out to put up his, his 60, 60, whatever we'd need from him. And I just like the other spend ups better than him tonight. So he's by the wayside for me. Um, we could talk about the Knicks now and, and Giannis, who's probably going to project as the highest raw scoring point player on the slate or right there, right near it. Um I don't know, man. Uh, this doesn't feel very interesting to me either. I, I know I'm sounding like a broken record, and and hey, that might all change by by this afternoon. But as of right now, what are we? I don't know. What 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 looks good to you, if anything? Uh, right. So like I, so I so I got, I got something here. So first of all, yeah, Giannis does project to be the top top overall point scorer by, you know, just a couple of points. I mean, not not a big deal. And you know, coming to Madison Square Garden, I can see how how we'd want to, mm-hmm. you know put up a good game. He always wants to put up a good game. Though. He doesn't need to, he doesn't need to be motivated. You know, he's a, uh, um, but I, I'll just throw this in. I, I, I might be making this up. Okay. It's just kind of like, it's something that's in my memory. I seem to recall that Mitch Robb always has good games against Milwaukee. Now, again, I can't, I can't prove that, but this is what I have in the back of my head. Um, and I don't even know if you go play on a back. To, I, I don't know. Yeah, I know. That's a whole other question. You know, um, and obviously he can foul out and, you know, in two quarters also, you know, but, but, um, but with, with some pretty, pretty, well, there's some chalk at, at this price range and there's some chalk at center uh, in general. Um, if you need to get really different, um, he's projecting exactly the same as he has been, but just is such a bigger slate that he's just going to get lost. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I, I would take a shot at him uh, in MME. Um, and who knows, by the end of the day, I might put him in my big buy and we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, but I definitely have some, again, it's, I, I have to go back and check, but 
these are just my memories I have of him having yeah. good games against Milwaukee. So I will, um, I'll yeah, consider that know. if he's playing, if he doesn't play on a back to back, maybe we can go to your man. We can go to the Hartenstein. Um, that can be a, that can be a, that can be a fun way to lose. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so, so that's possible. So I think Giannis is obvious. I mean, he's going to score a lot of points. If he's going to score a lot of points to win a 13 game slate, rough. Um, but uh, that's, those are really my only two opinions on this game. Yeah, I'm guessing there's going to be a ton of value that opens up here because, uh, and and I do think that Giannis will end up having some ownership. But I, I can I can, I'm look with how bad their defense is and how fast they're playing the Knicks. It's, it's such a weird thing to have this exact opposite current conversation that we've had for the past four years about the Knicks. Yeah. Um, but it kind of makes you want to do something. I, I think. I mean, I I guess I think. I, if you're not like I, I, I'm not that into Giannis, but I, I don't mind like a little bit of Drew Holiday here. Um, I, I just I don't think he'll be in my main buy in, but I, I think Holiday and Mitch Rob are probably my favorite plays in this one as well. Um, they have the back to back coming from Detroit for New York. But uh, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm just not all that excited about it. I guess if there was one other guy I would I would go I would maybe take a shot on I would consider RJ Barrett as a as a large field tournament play, but uh, not not very exciting. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you if you played it all last night, but like I, I watched, uh, you know, a decent amount of the Nick game last night. But the end of the first quarter it was like forty to thirty. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, they they hit guard anybody. It's freaking no. crazy when you think about it. How about Julius um, Randle taking seven threes in the first five minutes of the game? Excuse me, as as did Marvin Bagley from the other side of the. Of the of yeah, the it was pretty wild. He, <laughs> he had eighteen fantasy points in the first quarter. I had him at four percent ownership. He ended up with like twenty. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's a, yeah, we've um, seen that before. Yep. Um, but yeah, okay, we'll see. Yep. Well, moving on. Uh, what do you have for so the five o'clock games? Uh, yeah. So now we're now we're getting now we're getting into the slate here. Um, so I have San Antonio against OKC. So couple couple of things stand out, and whenever I see this, it just it just I just can't imagine this ever being good, but. I'll just say that that Zach Collins at 4,500 rates to be one of the top plays on the slate yeah. from point per dollar perspective. Um, and I also see him at 20% ownership. It feels, it just feels bad, but uh, I'm just reporting it, you know? Yeah. Um, and that, that's, that's, that's what I have from San Antonio. I also very marginal uh, uh, Bates Diop as a play, but it's the Collins play that, that needs to be addressed. And uh, on the other side of the ball, uh, ball, I have I have Shea as the best overall play on the slate, like right Ooh. now. Um, yeah, um, I have him ahead of all of those other spend ups when you factor in price. Um, so uh, that and and listen, he he did not do me very any favors the other day. Uh, we talked about this. I mean, he scored literally zero fantasy points in the first eight minutes, um, and then you know then he scored forty five the rest of the game, which is. So if he played decently right. in the first eight minutes, he would have gotten there. <laughs> right. Um so I like that. Uh I like Shea. I like um we'll have to talk, I guess, about Zach Collins. He certainly looks like a good play. What happened? He's like all of a sudden starts to get starts to get minutes. Oh, Potal is out. Okay. Yeah. So Collins at 20% plus ownership. What could go wrong? One of those. What about Charles? Bassey, yeah. Um, what about Georgie Dang? Uh, what, what do you think of this whole San Antonio business? Uh, look, Zach Collins is probably going to play his normal twenty minutes. Right. right. Um, <laughs> he played twenty four minutes one time in the last four years. Um, would this be a spot where maybe you could could do it? Like, sure, but it, it, that that ownership it doesn't seem like the right thing to do. He's right. an incredible point per minute fantasy producer overall for his whole career. Always has been uh, since he's been in San Antonio, especially, but there's like a million bus paths in there and you're not usually, you're not like getting like 40 out of them. I think almost ever, unless they do let him play like 28, 30 minutes. And that just seems unlikely to me. Uh, he did play a back-to-back in his last time, his last time out. So maybe they were willing to give him some more minutes. I have him as a, as one of the early priorities because I think the projections are, pr- are pretty accurate, actually, to be honest, about where he that that being his median score. But I think you're getting some 35s in there, and I think you're getting some seven sevens and tens. You know, I really think there is that that downside to it. Um, and like you said, it could just as easily be Charles Bassey 
uh, as it as it could be Colin. So another guy who can put up big big numbers in in no time. But they've they've also got Isaiah Roby now. Like they, there's just they have plenty of bodies who they play minutes, and I don't see them changing that just because oh Podol's out. We're not going to give Zach Collins Podol's minutes. Let me just see real quick what what uh, what the the minutes projection is on him. Uh, what twenty eight minutes? That's a that's a very bold projection for a guy who hasn't played twenty eight minutes. I have, yeah, I have him at twenty five. That seems a little more. That reasonable. seems that seems more reasonable. And that what does that what does that get you around around twenty eight fantasy points or so? Twenty nine point six. I have. Yeah. Oh yeah, you got twenty nine points. Yeah. See, that's that's at least a little bit more reasonable than the thirty three. I think than thirty three is probably not the shouldn't be the medium, but twenty eight or twenty eight or so. I, yeah, he's one of the plays. Um, I don't like anybody else particularly from San Antonio. Uh, if somebody gets is out though, I think this is a game you could stack because I like like you, I. I have some interest in Shea here as well. I'm a little concerned about what's happened. I'm kind of confused about what's happening with Giddy. He wasn't really like active or doing anything in the last game. He only played 28 minutes in the last two games, which is a little unusual for him. Um, I don't know. And it was close games too. Like he wasn't playing certain important minutes and you think he'd get run with a second unit, which he usually does. So I'm a little concerned about Giddy. Otherwise, I, I mean, his price and the spot seem good. Um, and then, and then I have Poku as a potential play. And then I'm going to just really quickly uh, say that I'm very frustrated by my Jeremiah Robinson Earl take from the other day because I was 100% accurate. They're going to need his size out there to play against the size of New Orleans. And he played 33 minutes and put up 35 fantasy points at 4,100. And at half a percent ownership, I didn't have him in my big buy-ins. He wasn't one of my 88s, but... Uh, that really bothered me that I didn't because I, I had two big buy-ins that night and he was in in my my big one of them initially and I just all the other value made me fade him out and he was a very good value. Um, so I, I, all of these guys are in play for me. I think that Shea is the priority of if you had to pick one, but I, I think I just have one of one of those four and I and I like these kind of matchups for Poku even though we know he's got a wide range of outcomes. You're going to get a, I think a, I think by the end of the day a very low owned Poku like one or two percenter with a guy who's got, you know, a 45 fantasy point ceiling. Um, it just might take a lot of things going his way. And, 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 and if he's playing too well, they might pull him off the court too. You never know with this team. They're so weird. Um, uh, then it, it, just, just seeing what happens with Jalen Williams starting versus Poku is, is something I'll keep an eye out for. Although I'm not sure I'm going to end up with either of them, but I, but I do like the game environment. So I, I kind of like the idea of just maybe, maybe we just call it and say, Hey, we'll play Shea. He's the best, the best player on the team. But uh, I do like some other spend-ups we haven't gotten to either. So I, I, I do think Shea is definitely in play, though. Um, all right, let's go to the next game, which is uh, – what do you got next, Sheets? New Orleans-Toronto. New Orleans-Toronto. All right, start, why don't you start that one off for us? So I, curr- I, I, I currently don't have much, but I think that's presuming the following. So on New Orleans, I'm presuming I think that, that C.J. McCollum is playing – Yep. Um, as would maybe maybe Larry Nance. So I'm not getting to the same types of New Orleans guys that we would have gotten to earlier. Um, but, I mean, I would definitely make sure that McCollum is in before we make that conclusion, right? Because if you, if you have McCollum and um, and uh, Ingram, and Ingram's out, right? So, so if you have those two out, I mean, I, I can't imagine why Zion would be a bad play. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, oh, yeah. if both of them are out, I think if both of them are in, he's her and projections don't have him in such a great play with both of them in. Um, so we you just got to have to watch that. Um, you want a real just nasty tournament play? We yeah. can go back to Valanciunas who busted us the other day oh, at Shaw. Um, uh, it's a real nasty one, I'll have to say that. No, um, joke. but uh, aside from that, I mean, the game is pretty much a to- uh, cross off for me. Yeah, I think it's I'm I think I'm almost ready to cut bait and, until they make him like 4500 on FanDuel or something like that. <laughs> right. Um but he hasn't played 30 minutes since October. Um oh, and it doesn't sound yeah. like that that doesn't sound like that long of a time. And it, by the way, he's only played 30 minutes I think one time this season. That's I I just can't do the 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 Joe Val thing. I'm still like it's still teasing me over there on FanDuel at 5500. If it was like literally like 4500, I think I would just have to just say, "Okay, you know what? I'll just take a chance." <laughs> like but it, it, you know, this is a is a really good real life game between two teams that are, you know, certainly maybe not maybe second tier level contenders. Actually, I, th- I think the Pelicans are legitimate contenders when they're healthy. Um, 
yeah, everybody looks fine. We if depending on if, if McCollum's in, but if McCollum's in, shouldn't we maybe consider McCollum or Zion? Like, imagine if we just had a game and Brandon, we said Brandon Ingram's out, and now we know Joe Val's sort of taken out of the main thing and going to be replaced by guys who are, you know, you're not running your offense through, which you do through Joe Val sometimes. So basically, everything runs through McCollum and Zion. I, I, th- I do think both those guys are interesting, at least to mention it's a tough matchup against Toronto for sure, but they create their own pace, especially at home. Um, and, and for what it's worth, Toronto being a one point favorite right now, I think that's supposed to make us think that, I don't know. I, I think that that means McCollum is legit questionable is, is my take on that. Uh, so if he's out, uh, we're going to go back to a lot of the same things we did the other day, which maybe, maybe, maybe it won't play Devonte Graham this time, <laughs> but but uh, but I do think we're going to be talking about some Pelicans value if 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 McCollum's out. But as of right now, I have Mc, I have one of McCollum or uh, or Jova. I'm sorry, or one of McCollum or Zion as being fairly interesting. And it's just really hard to predict these Raptors. You like them in a pace up spot, but when they're all healthy, yeah, probably somebody can get there. But I don't know how to guess what that's going to be. Siakam is 9600, so it's hard to do that. And he had his, you know, as a min- he had a minutes limit the last game, which he played 30 minutes, played really well, as he always does. Um, so, yeah, it's basically just one of uh, McCollum or Zion at the moment. Just keep an eye out for news. Uh, that's all I've got. I-, I think that the best thing we're learning so far is unless we hear stuff in the first games, basically the slate starts at 8 p.m., right, Sheets? What starts at 8? The, the slate really starts at 8 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, San Antonio game is when? 8. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah, that that that's when the the game the, the thing starts for me anyway. All right, now we get to the most Im- the, the most important game to get right on the slate, right? The uh, Memphis Minnesota game. Sheet, you want to start off with what you got, and I'll I'll, I'll throw out some takes. I, I I don't think there's any way you're not playing at least one player from Minnesota tonight, and I think that you probably should be playing two, and I think you could play as many as three or four. So yeah, so this is again, uh, this is similar to the. Uh to the uh, Oklahoma City, who were they playing the other day? I think it was the Pelicans, actually, um, mm-hmm. where, I, where I was trying to explain to people what, you know, what GPP plays or what, how he's supposed to play DFS, right? This is another real good example. So what happens is 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 Carl Anthony Towns is out, and the, the prices on these, Memphis, on these Minnesota guys didn't really adjust. Um, so they're all going to take up the usage. They're going to take up the minutes. So these guys are all going to come up as really, really strong plays. And, and, and currently – you know, if I'm listing them in terms of, you know, in point per dollar, you have, I have Kyle Anderson. Um, let's put it up here. So I have Kyle Anderson first, and then I have Jalen uh, Noel second, but these are all pretty, pretty close. And then uh, I even have Nas Reed. And we're going to get to the point of this in a minute. Yeah. And then I have Nas Reed. And those are like the guys that pick up, you know, whatever. And then there's also Rudy Gobert and then the, the actual, uh, what's his name? Uh, and Anthony Edwards, right? So so these are the guys who, you know, are, are going to all benefit. So the question is, 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 how, is how do you deal with this? Like the one thing you could do is, you know, you'll end up playing, I would say, at least one, probably at least two of these guys. Um, and, th- but the thing that's really important is the other side of this game, you know, cause, cause you have, I talked, I alluded to this earlier when we talked about how to prioritize these spend ups. And I said that what's probably preferable is to play a spend up where you have value on the other side. And that's where you get John Moran. So Moran is 10, nine, he rates to be, you know, not quite as good maybe as some of these other spend ups, but the way he he runs back with all, all this value makes it like a real easy, real easy GPP lineup to kind of make. In other words, I don't know exactly which of these guys to use, but that's what I mean. If you if you both multiple lineups, I wouldn't mind if you said, give me Ja with of these five guys. If I might be missing one, but let's just presume it's just these five guys, and then I'll just shuffle, you know, two two in every lineup. You know what I mean? And just see. And then, then, then build my lineup starting with that. And I think that that's probably the way you're supposed to start approaching this slate. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think I think that, that that was my first initial look at, at the build was literally I built a lineup last night without any projections. And that was sort of like I was like, oh, my God, I've got I've got five guys from Minnesota in my lineup on a 13 game slate. I think they're all really good plays. If I had to prior, I'll, I'll prioritize them. Uh, you also have a whole bunch of like, you know, they had a really 
contentious series and the game of being in Minnesota makes me feel better about it staying close. Um, and it's, I, only, and I, it's only a two point spread. I mean, it's not a big deal. Right. Exactly. Well, I mean, yeah. but in Memphis, the problem with Memphis is they play the close, they, 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 they play the game down to the wire or they beat you by 30 or something like that. They, they play in a lot of blowouts, right. but, and I would be a little bit concerned about Minnesota. I think that, I think that capping out is, you know, they're going to have to re re rearrange some things. But I, I have, uh, I have, I mean, Anderson against his former team, I think is really interesting, but I'm, if he doesn't start, you're probably going to get a little bit of an ownership discount on him. Cause I think he's going to be really popular if he starts. And I don't think he has to start here, but what's weird is I, they may end up starting Nas Reed. This is another reason why the slate starting at eight. And if they start Nas Reed, I'll definitely take some shots there. Um, you can play two bigs against this Memphis team. If Minnesota wants to keep going that route. Although this seems like a pretty good opportunity to try and maybe jump off of that. Jaden McDaniels being questionable is actually pretty damn important. Um, because if he's out, then you, then you're really getting even thinner. Um, and McDaniels makes Noel and Anderson even just that, that much better of a play. So we'll see about, about Jaden McDaniels later, but right now I have Kyle Anderson and, and Noel as the clear values. And I have Anderson as a little bit better. And I have, uh, I, I I like I like Russell I, I like I like Edwards the best but he's going to be the most popular so Russell and Gobert I think is it makes for I forgot a about Russell I knew I forgot somebody for sure. yeah and and I just think like maybe if you're playing Russell maybe you play Russell with instead of Noel maybe you play Russell with uh with Anderson or maybe you play Edwards with Noel you know what I mean just because Russell and Noel at least theoretically should eat a little bit into each other in terms of the ball handling duties. And this is a good spot, a good a good pace game. Gobert is not going to get played off the court at this pace. Uh, he can play he can play in the in the, in the faster games, uh, unlike some of the other bigs. So I I actually think this is a really good rebounding spot for him. So I, I think you are playing probably at least two of these guys, and that's sort of the way I have it. Gobert maybe maybe the least interesting to me. Uh, I guess I like Gobert as, as safer than D'Angelo, but I think they're both really good plays. And D'Angelo had a nice series against these guys last year. Uh, and I love the, I, I love what you said. I, you, you run it back with jaw and then you, you, you hope it stays close. Um, I also think if you're going to consider some maybe deeper tournament stuff, I don't think it's a, a mistake to play Steven Adams because he'll be down low anyway. He's stronger than Gobert is. He's put it up 30, you know, he's he basically what 30, 32 and 32 or more three out of the last four. It's not the most exciting play, but it's a guy who can get you like seven X at their at 5,400. So I, I would get some exposure to, to Steven Adams and Jaron Jackson uh, in multi-entry stuff. And I, I do think jaw is a really interesting play. So I'm, I'm very into this game. This is the, the game to target and stack. If you're going to pick one, it's just hard to play two guys from Memphis. Um, if you did, I think it's jaw and Adams running it back with four guys from St. Minnesota. I really do, but probably just jaw and three or four for is what I'm going to do. Really, really. Uh, this is the, the main one though. I think of, of all the games on the slate that you want to get right. Um, all right. You ready to move on to the next one? Clippers and uh, yeah, Clippers or you got the Houston, Houston, Houston. All right. Uh, Houston. And let me, why don't you start it off? Cause I'm pulling up my sheets here. I'm trying to jumble between screens a little slow. By the time you, by the time you, you pull it up, it'll probably be done with it. But um, <laughs> Denver. Uh, so Jokic put up 59 fantasy points in a tuxedo in 27 minutes. His last game <laughs> um, didn't bother coming in in the fourth quarter. And who else, who else went off a little bit, by the way, did you notice that? What's that? Paul Murray was just killing it. Jamal yeah. Murray, he had 46 and he he didn't even play the last he, like he got even cut a little shorter even I think with his rotations. Yeah, nobody they 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 put took took the brakes off of that game. Um and uh Jokic once again is showing up as a good play. I mean, he's going to you know he's, gonna, he's like on a floor of 60 I <laughs> like maybe may, maybe a ceiling of 65, you know, they're going to keep blowing people out, you know, but but um uh this team is starting to get uh Starting to get kind of good, I think. Um, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's that's one, two, three of his last four are Murray at forty-five fantasy points, you know. And like you said, and his last one, he didn't even, you know, barely played. Yep. Um, so I don't know. I have Jokic as a play. I'm not really getting to Murray. Um, certainly, will be low owned. I don't know. Problem for me. Uh, listen, it's it's. I don't want to don't want to do create go too crazy. I'll probably either play Jokic or nobody. For this game. Yeah, we just saw them blow this team out. Um, it was a close game at halftime, for what it's worth. Yeah. <laughs> until until Jokic put up thirty something in the th third quarter, something like that. Yeah. Um, but I, I look, what, what, this is a uh, one of Murray Brown or Jokic 
uh, all of those guys are in good spots and I will uh, Bruce Brown had as another one who had no fan, no fantasy points in the first quarter the other night and ended up with 26. Um, we know he's got a ceiling because he just put up 57 the other day. <laughs> um, all three of these guys are interesting to me. So I, I like I like Jokic Murray, one of the the three of uh, Jokic Murray and Brown with my current preference being Murray. Um, but I can't get to anything on Houston side. And I guess that's just the way it is. But the problem is you get you're probably gonna need somebody from Houston to keep this game close. And uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. I'm a little worried about the, the just the, the 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 game staying close, but I, I do think that Murray is starting to hit his stride again. And we're gonna that that price tag has crept up. When I when I started talking about him, he was like 5600. Now he's up to 72. I still think that's a very reasonable price for him. So I, I think at low ownership, he's a guy I'll take a shot on. All Utah, right. Utah, LAC, not much. Um, Let's see who plays for LAC. Kelly O and Sexton for Utah. Um, just kind of like fringe, fringe mid-range values. Aside from that, I got nothing. Uh, I'm going to have something on this one later today. Uh, as as I sort of, I think there, I mean, this is a tough situation going back to back and and then playing in Utah, but. Uh, for what it's worth, that was one thing I was pretty sure about. And, of course, he had tons of ownership, but Reggie Jackson just went completely nuts last night. Um, 50 million points or whatever he put up. There's going to be a clipper that's, that, that, that makes some sense. I'm just having trouble realizing it. Zubach didn't play down the stretch in that game, and he was actually playing really well. Um, that, that You know, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm so, I, I feel like I'm supposed to play a clipper here, and I don't know which one I want, would want to play. Um uh, I don't know. It, it, it's it's there's still enough guys out where I think that we should be talking about these guys. It just feels weird on a back to back after a tight home game to go to Utah. But why is Reggie Jackson's projection so awful? It may, maybe it's a little bit overreactive, and may, maybe getting some Reggie Jackson, Norman Powell, Terrence Mann exposure. But none of them like look amazing right off the bat. But I just have Clippers. I think you're going to end up wanting one of them. And I, cause you, you, by the way, somebody could end up sitting cause this is a back to back. So you might even get more value on the Clippers tonight. I don't know why they were playing that dude down the stretch. Uh, the Diabate instead of, uh, instead of, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Zubach. Uh, otherwise I would just say play Zubach, but I also think that what, you know, Colin Sexton and Olenek are, are interesting to me on the other side. So I, I don't mind this game as much as, as maybe you did, but um Sexton or Olenek would be the way I would go yeah, those are the two Utah guys that have yeah all right um let's talk about uh why don't you start us off with this India is it, what do you have next India or the yeah Indian uh, well, we could we could we could skip Chicago Phoenix if you want I mean oh my god my fault I didn't even see that no 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 it's fine that's what I'm saying <laughs> um the only thing I'm even getting I mean like Booker is is like my 14th best spend up you know what I mean like I'm not really seeing that and then um and then on Chicago side, what do you want to do? Play freaking Andre Drummond? I mean, I don't know. I think I'm just kind of off of this game. Trying to figure out what I would do if I did anything here. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't have anybody who looks good from a projection standpoint. But uh, one of the Bulls is pretty much always gets there. Um, I think Levine would be my favorite. Well, Levine and DeRozan would be similar. Um, I don't mind the, uh, I don't mind taking a shot, you know, Booker is expensive, but we, we see him just completely go nuts and take over in some of these games. And I could see him getting 60 plus the guy who, who is not going to, you know, get any ownership. I mean, none of them are really, but I'm still kind of interested in the idea of Cameron Payne at 6,600. I know it feels a little reachy, but I I'm open to it. And, uh, I think one of he or Booker would be my favorites here, but like you said, not, none of them priorities. I mean, with Booker, you really do get that that huge minute ceiling so that, you know, if he's got it going, he put up 69 the other night. He put up 78 last week. Uh, he should certainly be in the in the mix of, of, of the spend ups. He's and he's and he's a little cheaper than the other spend ups. But uh, as of right now, I do have Shea as a better play for what it's worth. So and they're, they're a similar price range. All right. So if you don't believe in projections, if, if you want, you know, if, if you want to just kind of like put the projections aside for a minute. And not even so much that much, but you, you want to play? I mean, I'll give you a play. You, you got a 240 and a half, no, 242 and a half total 
and Senor Halliburton going back to Sacramento. Okay. Yeah. He's going to score a hundred fantasy points in this game. And if he doesn't, it's not going to be for a lack of trying. Okay. Um, uh, this game is, has got to go bananas. Right. And, 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 you put Halliburton on one side, you get track meet Fox on the other side. I don't know how many people are going to do that. Probably very few. Mm -hmm. um, and just hope every game previously busts. You know, we talked about all these other, all these other spend ups or whatever it is. Um, these are these, these two guys at nine K 9,500. They don't exactly project well, you know, as well as some of these others, but Sabonis is close, you know, um, he's close to these other guys. I think this is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Um, and the other thing, and, and now again, this is probably pushing it, but I am, I guess for the 10th time this year, getting a, a good projection on Malik Monk. Um, uh, no wonder, he's 17% off. Okay, so, so I'm not the only one. Okay. Um, but overall, I mean, if you play other stuff on the slate, don't forget this is a 242 and a half point total in a close game. Yep. Um, you you probably want to want to have a piece, and if you have a good score like from these early games, I would not start spending your money quite yet until this until this game is over because there's going to be a lot of points in the offing, and you know I I know at least from Indiana at least where where most of the fantasy points are going to come from and S Sacramento too you know so I, I think this is a game that might not project as well as maybe it should. Um, and uh, I'm very much interested in this. Yeah, um, pretty uh, pretty similar similar page. I, 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 this is a very interesting stack, and it one that I don't know how I want to stack. So I like the Halliburton on its own. Uh, one thing about Halliburton, the only thing that scares me about like him in like a narrative driven type of situation is he really is going to be trying to set people up. He's not going to try to go out there and score in general. He's the okay. best assist guy in the NBA by a by a large margin. I think. I don't know if anybody this late in the season has had like a two assist lead on anybody. I'll take some assists too. That's fine. Yeah, no, that yeah, exactly. And and it's a good a good game for it. And I I can get on on board with it. Uh, back to, and then and then you get some bonus versus his former team. And and buddy he buddy healed. Excuse me, going back to Sacramento. Buddy healed is always willing to shoot, also, which may take away a little bit from Halliburton. Yeah, actually. Should be, yeah maybe. Um, but but I think buddy healed. I mean, look, like like this is a game I want. I would like to get some exposure to, and I don't know how. I think that I actually think Matherin I prefer over healed. Um, so I have, I have one of, uh, Halliburton, Matherin or healed, but I, I do think that, that he, uh, healed is a little bit behind the other two and, uh, De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis as the main runbacks with, uh, Malik Monk, who's, uh, projecting really well and been really, you know, really, really good. He's very volatile, but, uh, I also think that, uh, as a cheapo, because he's playing later, Maybe Keegan Murray gets does something here. Like, you know, they they passed on him in the draft. So so it went it went they went back to back in the draft, Matherin and, and Murray. Unless I'm mistaken. Um he's 3,800. Maybe he gets some extra run if he's playing well. I think he can play himself into more minutes. Um he was in those th the 30s early in the year and just always over 20 fantasy points. And now it's we're seeing sort of like a little bit of like rookie fatigue. But 3,800, certainly Murray should be in consideration as a at least a long shot value play, if nothing else. Um, I don't think it's guaranteed that they have to run everything else. If he's hot, like uh, they have to play all the, uh, all the Monk and Mitchell, if, if he's hot. So uh, yeah, I like the stack. Still not sure how I want to do it, but it would be probably Halliburton with one of Sabonis and Fox as the main parts. And then the fringy pieces, uh, Ma you know, Matherin, um, uh, Murray, things like that. But I think, I know it's a long shot with Murray, and I just wish Indiana would would stop playing so many of these wings at so many minutes because I'd like to see a 35 minute game out of Matherin. I'd like to see, you know, consistent minutes for Jalen Smith or something like that. They just keep rotating so much. It's it's kind of hard to to pick anyone outside of just Halliburton as a as a real priority. But uh, I could certainly get behind Matherin, Murray, a lot a lot of. A lot of people coming back, like it's it's kind of a funny matchup. You got everybody coming back to Sacramento. You got Sabonis against his former team, but then you also have the two guys, but drafted back to back. It's just kind of an interesting narrative game. Um, but yeah, that's that's my second favorite game to stack. And then with that, we can move on to Portland and the Lakers. Um, Sheets, what do you got here with Portland and LA? And then I'll I'll go through my stuff after you after you do. 
I have Justice Justice Winslow as a good play again at 4,600. Um, I also have Nurkic as a good play at 6,900 from the Portland side. And um, on the Lakers side, I have both Anthony Davis and LeBron as maybe just below the Shea, Giannis, Jokic, and Bede um, group and Ja group, but, you know, certainly lower owned than the aforementioned. Um, so uh, it's not, not the, it's not as good as some of these other games, but you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to turn my screen off if I have a good score with this game left to play either. You know what I mean? Um, so that's pretty much it. I mean, I, Oh, do we still care about Josh Hart going back to LA? Um, no, I'm sure done this a million times. Um, so uh, I like Winslow and I guess either Davis or LeBron, but I, I don't think any of that's a priority really. Yeah, I think if I had to pick one, it's 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 going to stay Davis for me at the time, as I keep mentioning. LeBron doesn't have, like, I know he had a good, he's going to have some games because he's still great, but he doesn't have the burst. His, you know, his, his shots are coming mostly from the outside. Um and, and, and I just, I can't quite do it. Um, Davis would be the preferred one. And I actually like Davis in this matchup for what it's worth, but I I don't know where I have him versus the other guys and he's center eligible only. Um, but certainly a 10, seven is reasonable. I mean, he hasn't put up less than 57 fantasy points and he had one game and what yeah, hasn't done it since uh, the 11th of, of November. Um, I, I could definitely see the, the argument behind playing Anthony Davis here, but I'm not overly excited. I'm a little Worried about Portland on the back-to-back. They had a competitive game last night. Simons was awesome. Um, made nine threes, put up 53 fantasy points. And uh, for me, as of right now, I just have Winslow as the priority here. But this is this, uh, maybe get a little bit of exposure to, to Schroeder. Didn't play especially well the other night, but did play 30 minutes. Um, he's my only – I mean, I don't see him – he and Winslow as being so different here. Um Winslow is a little safer, but I think that Schroeder could Schroeder at no ownership is kind of interesting. Uh, and we're going to have to, before we get out of here, we're going to have to go back to the projections of Saber Sim at least, because I know you want to have an updated, but we do officially have no CJ McCollum now. So Ooh, okay, uh, that, that there's, there's the slate changer for you. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so let's talk about that game again. I'm just going to update the projections because that is going to be where we, I mean, Zion becomes automatically, probably the best well, while you're doing that i'm just going to look at FanDuel real quick and see if there was anything that stood out here that i didn't go over as far as draft teams goes not really um uh just the same names that i brought up i will say that cameron Payne looks a little bit better on FanDuel um at 6k and oh they did it they put Kyrie irving under 8k uh on FanDuel. that's kind of interesting I, as I've been saying, though, I still, I went through this last time. Those types of plays never seem to work. You know, the mm-hmm. play at 93, not quite 91, not quite 88, not quite 78, not quite. You know what I mean? Like, they usually just smash at, like, 92. You know what I mean? Like, right, like, right. You know, they, 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 this is this type of thing where you can never actually get them at low ownership, you know, like, is uh, is a little annoying. Mm-hmm. Um um who else stands out Not, nothing really uh sp- specific um so wh- where where what are you seeing for um for uh for the well, new Orleans guys yet anything it's not popping off the you know like it like it did the other night okay. um but I, I i'll just say that zion will be a priority for me um alvarado i still think is totally reasonable at 4900 uh yeah. not an ideal matchup or situation uh, maybe this is the spot I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it by big buy-in, but I'm going to throw Devonte Graham into some lineups. There it um, is. I, I mean, I'll take a shot. Look, I mean, I don't care. One bad game is a couple bad games. And for a guy with, you know, can put up 35 and he's a value. Like I'll, I'll take a shot there. Um, yeah. They're not getting as big of a pop as I thought would have thought either, except for Alvarado. Um, a lot of respect for Toronto's defense because that's kind of weird. Yeah. Oh, you still have Najee Marshall and Larry Nance questionable too. If both those guys are out, it'll open up the wings with okay. Trey Murphy, and then we'll go back to you know guys like that. Um, I don't know about Alvarado at four nine though. You know, um, it's four six the other day. It's not like that different. I guess. Yeah, but it was also a smaller. Or was it a smaller? Maybe it wasn't. No, it was a big slate, but the but it was a better matchup. Right. 
Um, the, this matchup is is no fun for anybody. Um, you have the two most annoying defenders to play against, probably, in Fred Van Vliet and Alvarado and all of basketball. Um, right. So, so maybe, maybe that's why. But I, I I will go right on back to uh, to Zion, and and I probably will get some Dyson Daniels exposure if we get the other wings out. Um, that's really what we have to wait on for the rest of them. But I, I think you should be playing. I think you should be playing a good amount of Zion tonight and live with the results. It's uh, it, it's like just like giving up on what should be. He's being projected at 43. I think he should be projected almost at 50, basically, no matter what, when everybody else is out. It's just he's going to get there almost every time, in my opinion. You know, I know you you, you brought this up a little bit before. Um, I, I think you did. I, I stopped. I, I don't know if I was listening, but when we were talking about the Indiana Sacramento game, I'm looking at like my early Sabres and build. I mean, just based on the projections from a while ago. And aside from like the normal guys, you see kind of at the top of that guy showing up like 15 percent from that Indiana game is, is Jalen Smith. Um, I know yeah. you've been talking about him pretty much all season, you know, and, and 4,500 is pretty reasonable and, and it's a great game environment in general. And, and, uh, Oh, you know what? I got to take this. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, we're basically wrapping it up anyway, guys. Good luck to everybody tonight and uh, we'll see you at, at live.